but all the teams that participated in this event uh, deserve your thanks and applause. So let's do a quick round of applause. This has been a dream for open air for a long time. Uh, we had 28 teams from 10 different countries, from five different continents, uh, be part of this challenge. But tonight we are here with the five finalist teams. And I really wanted to create something of my own and this has given me a platform to do that. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. It's, it's been a really cool ride. It's amazing that we've been able to like spread what we're doing um, even from Australia in, in New York. I'd always kind of thought about climate change and carbon removal in abstract terms before I started this project. But now that I participated in it, I really understand that it's such a big, multifaceted issue and that there's so many different sides to removing carbon. The Carbon Removal Challenge was organized by myself and other open air volunteers. We put this together ourselves. We launched a competition. We went out and recruited as many teams as possible. We guided them through an acceptance process. We gave them educational materials to help them understand the, everything from the landscape of what carbon removal was, why it was important, what the different technologies were out there, how you measure and verify and grow these technologies once they're ready. Five finalist teams were accepted and flown to New York City for a final showcase of their work at NYU as part of the 2040 Now initiative where they got to showcase their ideas for industry leaders, other students, and uh, inspire that next generation of people to get involved in the Carbon Removal Challenge going forward. We were really lucky that the Carbon Removal Challenge was part of the NYU's 2040 Now initiative, where NYU was sort of imagining what the world was going to be like in 2040 Now, and where all these climate solutions would be by then. And I've been so amazed here today watching students coming with working devices that are literally removing CO2 from the atmosphere, prototypes that use engineering, chemistry, biology, art, communication. So the students got to not only come in and showcase their projects uh, as part of the Carbon Removal Challenge, but they also got to experience a lot of these other talks and sessions and learn about uh, carbon removal. We also wanted to give them the opportunity to experience New York some, so uh, we set up a list of fun activities for students who are coming to New York. They got to do the High Line, they got to uh, visit some landmarks that are, are popular for visitors to New York. Uh, we wanted it to be a mix of both pleasure and uh, learning for them uh, while they were here in New York. We're so grateful for our sponsors, Brink, Air Company, Peter and Erica Reinhardt, and NYU Sustainability, NYU Alliance for Public Interest Technology, and NYU Tisch uh, were huge in us being able to have a first successful carbon removal challenge, and we really couldn't have done it without the support of those amazing sponsors. This year's challenge was a huge success, and we're really happy about it. We think it's a great stepping stone to uh, next year. Next year, what we need to grow this program is we need more sponsorship, we need to get the word out to more students, more teams around the world. Uh, we need to be able to create more opportunities for our, not just our finalist teams, but for all the participants in this challenge because a big key to the Carbon Removal Challenge is not just will this team come up with a visionary solution, a breakthrough, something that will overhaul the way we're doing carbon removal, we just need more people working on climate. We just need more people working on carbon removal specifically. And this challenge will be a feeder into that industry. This challenge will create the workforce of tomorrow that's really going to change carbon removal. Whether or not they come through with a breakthrough, they're gonna be the people who are leading, working, developing this industry by mid-century when we need this to be one of the biggest solutions for climate that we have going.